Hi, welcome to the Ruckus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Today we're going to talk about the ICX and how to verify file hash values. So if you've ever downloaded code and you see that MD5 checksum.txt file and you wonder how to use that, today we're going to learn how to do that as well as you know how to verify um, not just an MD5 value but an SHA1 value or a CRC32 value should you wish to do so. So this will validate whether files that you've downloaded uh, are corrupted or have been manipulated and once they're on the switch before you reload the switch you can validate is that um, the exact code from the uh, that was was from ruckus right or has something happened to it the last thing you want to do is reboot into corrupted code or even worse uh, reboot and start running some kind of manipulated version of code. So this is going to uh, going to tell you how to do that. So let's have a look. Um, so our command here is from the console. Any ICX will do this: 7150, 7250, 7450, 7750, etc. Um, so it's the verify command. So we verify there's a CRC32, or it's actually a CRC32B. Um, SHA is SHA1 and MD5 is just standard so we can we can validate those types of code but most times you're going to use uh, MD5 and so when you download code um, and you extract say uh, this is 8060A when you extract that zip file that you download there's going to be this MD5 checksum.txt file so if you open that file up what you're going to get is you're going to get a list of all the files in the archive and then the MD5 values. So you can generate MD5 values on your local drive, right, and to determine whether that's true. But what I really care about is once that file is uploaded to the switch, I want to then verify the MD5 value to make sure that it's got to the switch, that it's not corrupted, that it's not manipulated, and that it's ready for the reload. So uh, what I would do is upload that code first onto the switch into the primary or secondary flash. And then, uh, so we find our switch. So in my case, it's 7150. We want the image file, this one here. So I'm going to copy this hash value right here. So we'll copy that. And then I'm going to drop back over here. And I'm going to say um, verify MD5 in this case. It wants to know whether it's primary or secondary partitions. We're going to say secondary. And then you could just hit enter here and have it calculate that value and you can manually compare those values. Or I'm just going to paste that in so I don't have to do the work. And uh, this is going to take about 30 seconds. So it's going to run the MD5 hash value on, um, on the file that's in my secondary flash and at the end it's going to tell me whether it matches that value that I pasted in from the checksum file or whether it fails that validation. So assuming it passed then we know that that file is exactly the same as the way it came off of the support site uh, and no manipulation or corruption has happened. So this only takes a second, it's almost done. There we go. So it shows the MD5 value of the file and then verification succeeded. So we know that these are exactly the same file, right? Um, should they have not, it would have given you the MD5 value that it calculated and then it would have said verification failed. So at which point you should probably go back and re-download that file directly from the support site because there's something not right with your file. So our other options here, CRC32 or SHA. So um, you can calculate the SHA value, and so uh, there's a website I found. You know, you could throw it into your into your favorite you know search engine and find a converter, or you could find a local converter. Say if you're running Linux, you could you could find a local converter that will convert those, uh, or at least calculate the SHA1 value or the CRC32B value off of that file. So in this case, this is called hash online-convert.com so you know I don't know too much about this site in fact I know nothing other than it came up in a search uh, but it seems to work pretty well so you, you choose your hash encryption so we'll choose SHA1 here and then you have a whole bunch of options right so you can upload uh, the the file to have it calculate um, you can also have it 
you know, uh, choose that file from your Google Drive or your Dropbox, but we're going to upload that file. So we're going to browse. Um, so in my case, this is the one SPS 080608.bin. So we'll upload that file. Uh, and when then we just say convert. So it's going to upload that file. It takes a few seconds here. Not very long, depending on the speed of your connection, obviously. Um, so uh, we could have done MD5 here. We could have done uh, CRC32B. So if you just choose the regular CRC32, it's going to give you the wrong value. It has to be the B uh, revision. Uh, so, okay, so it's given me a hex value here, right? So it's calculated this hash for me on the file. So I'm going to copy this here, and then I'm going to head back over. Um, and now I'm going to run a verify SHA secondary and then paste in the value that I got from the converter. And with a little bit of luck, these should also match. And obviously, you know, the CRC is done in exactly the same way. For most uh, people, though, MD5 is certainly going to be uh, just fine. But perhaps for, um, for our federal group, then, uh, then SHA is how they want to do it. Okay, so verification succeeded. So um, I'll just give you one more example of when it doesn't succeed, right? So let me, um, I'm going to use that same example, but I'm going to say primary. So I know that there's a different version in primary. So uh, this is going to fail the verification. So just so you can see what, what it looks like when it fails that verification. But of course, the, the um, MD5, text file that comes with the code has every single piece of code right so so if you wanted to do a local verification of the boot file or you know the the poe firmware file or anything before you upload it to the switch then you can certainly do that locally in your file system to make sure that that's a legit file um, however for if you're verifying once it's been uploaded to the switch then primary and secondary are your only options to run that uh, that verification so SHA is, is a slightly longer, uh, but you can see, so there you can see that verification failed, right? So you can see the SHA one value that it calculated based on the file that's in primary and what it should have been um, according to what we calculated prior on that website. And it gives you the verification failed. So in this case, you would go back and re-download that file um, or, and or re-TFTP uh, uh, it uh, onto your device. But anyway, that's it. So if you ever wondered what those uh, what that MD5 file was used for, there it is. So uh, hopefully I helped you hash that out. <laughs> All right. Have a good day and take care.